What's up? Welcome to the vlog, Detroit Poker. In this video, we're going to be going over something that I have received a fair amount of comments about. What is the difference between 1 2 and 2 5, or even like 1 3 and 2 5? I have two 1 2 hands and two 2 5 hands, and they're pretty much going to illustrate what I feel uh, the biggest difference is between the stakes. Before we get into the video, if you like poker hand analysis, poker strategy, and general poker content, you should definitely consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss any of my uploads so let's get into the video right now all right so this is a one two null limit hold'em hand and hero is in the small blind he has 232 dollars and gets out king queen of spades there's two limpers and we decide to complete and we kick in the extra dollar and the big blind checks, so we're going to go off to the flop four ways, and the flop comes out. King, seven, nine, rainbow, with one spade, and decide to start out with bet here. Obviously, we have top pair with backdoor flush draw, so we place bet for $8, which is the pot. And the big blind makes the call, and late position makes the call. Both of these players cover us, so we're off to the turn three ways, and the turn comes out, a jack of spades. We improve to a flush draw and a gut shot straight draw. So I decided to place another bet for $22. And pretty quickly, uh, the big blind announces 60 and he bumps it up $60. And late position folds pretty quickly and gets out of the way and the action's back on us. Decide to make the call and we're gonna go off to the river, heads up, and the river comes out, a three of clubs. So nothing really changes. We miss our draw and check the action over to the big blind and kind of not sure what we're going to do if the big blind places bet. However, big blind checks back and hero tables the hand, king, queen, and kind of expecting to win here. However, the big blind turns over 810 offsuit for a straight to the jack. He turns to the hero and he says, I thought you might have had queen 10. I was worried. That's why I checked back. I think we got a little bit of a break there on the river. Uh, we didn't have to face a tough decision, so... Let's get into the next hand, which will be from 2-5, no limit. All right. So for comparison, this hand has been plucked from 2-5, no limit hold'em. This is just your average Friday night. So Hero is under the gun one, playing $700 and gets dealt 8-6 of hearts. And under the gun limps, and this player is pretty passive and limping nearly 100% of hands. Hero raises it up to $20. The hijack calls, the cutoff calls, the button calls, and under the gun calls. So we are going off to the flop five ways and everyone in this hand covers us. So the flop comes out, king, deuce, five with two hearts and a spade. Under the gun checks it over to us. Uh, we decide to check as well. And the hijack checks and the cutoff places a bet for $50, and uh, we could describe this guy as like, uh, he's playing pretty much every hand, and he's kind of aggressive at times, and he, for lack of a better term, he just kind of seems like a degenerate gambler. He's playing over $2,000 right now. He's got a lot of money, that being said. Uh, the button and under the gun fold, and it's back on us. Decided to check raise here, and we bump it up to 160 and hijack pretty quickly gets out of the way. And the action's back on the cutoff. Nearly every decision he has, he takes a long time to think it over, and that's cool, or whatever. So uh, he goes in the tank and probably takes him about 45 seconds, and he decides on a call. So we're going to go off to the turn, heads up, and turn comes a six of spades. So we decide to bet again and place a bet for $175. And once again, cutoff goes into the tank, and ultimately he decides on a call. And we're off to the river, heads up. And the river comes a pretty interesting card. It is a king of spades, and it brings in the backdoor flush. And now we have a pretty weak hand here. So I uh, decide to check over to the cutoff. And the cutoff is in the tank once again. And you can tell he's thinking, and he assembles the bet. He grabs three black chips. And right before he's about to place the bet, he takes a gulp. And then he moves the three black chips over the line and drops them out of his hand. And then he takes another gulp. And at that point, uh, we make the call pretty quickly, put the $300 in, and we just wait, and he says, nice hand, but he's not turning his cards over, so we just kind of patiently sit there and wait a little bit longer, and 
usually people take the hint, they either mock or they show their hands. So this guy does give us a look and he faces the music and he turns over nine, four of hearts. Uh, so we're going to scoop this one up, a pair of sixes and a pair of kings. So let's get in the next hand. This will be a one, two hand. So we have another one, two, no limit hold of hand for comparison. Hero is in the cutoff, $217 stack. And we get dealt ace nine offsuit. And by the time the action reaches us, there is three limpers, varying stack sizes. And we decide to raise it up to 16. And the big blind and all three limpers call. So we're gonna go off to the flop five ways. The flop comes out ace king two with two clubs and a spade. And pretty quickly, action checks to us. We're gonna start out with a bet here. So we place a bet for $40. And it folds around to the guy in the hijack. And he makes the call for 40 and he does cover us. So we're going off to the turn, heads up, and the turn comes a five of diamonds, and the hijack checks the action to us, and we decide to check it back and pocket troll a little bit. So we're gonna go off to the river, heads up, and the river comes a six of hearts, and pretty quickly, our opponent assembles a bet, and slides over line is $60. And think about it for a few seconds, and we decide to make the call for 60, and our opponent turns over pocket deuces for bottom set, and Pretty quietly just muck our hand and we're gonna watch this dude in hijack collect our chips definitely uh, I think you're probably starting to get the difference between one two and two five so this hand is from two five no limit hold'em in middle position eight hundred and eighty dollar stack and we get dealt ace jack off suit and we raise first in to twenty dollars and the guy on our immediate left in the hijack makes a call for twenty probably playing about $460 behind right here. And this guy plays, I don't know, 75% of his hands and he's pretty aggressive and he's pretty sticky. And the big blind makes calls well, typical rec player, pretty much fitter fold post flop. And this guy's playing maybe a little more than the hijack. He's probably got about 500 behind. So we're going off to the flop three ways. The flop comes out Queen 3-7 with two diamonds and a club. And big blind checks the action over to us. Uh, we're going to start with a bet here. So we place a bet for $35. And gentleman in the hijack makes a call for $35. And big blind folds. So we're going off to the turn. Heads up. And the turn comes an ace of hearts. So uh, we actually make pair status here, which is pretty cool. And we place a bet for $80. And the gentleman in the hijack kind of thinks on it for a little while. And ultimately he makes the call. And we're going off to the river, heads up, and the river comes a pretty bad card. It is a queen of spades. We decide to kind of just block bet 110. The guy in the hijack, you know, hesitates maybe five or ten seconds, and he announces all in, and he jams. The dealer counts it up, and it's $345. And now we go into the tank a little bit and think it over, and history with this guy, like, he's definitely capable of jamming here, and if he has a queen bless his soul so ultimately we decide on a call for 345 and he just says nice call and he shows us king 10 of spades so pretty much a total air ball there and uh, we're going to scoop this one up all right so i think the hands that we went over in this video should definitely shine some light on the subject of what the differences are between one two and two five but in a nutshell at one two everyone is scared and they don't want to put money in the pot without the goods and no one is bluffing hardly ever whereas at two five uh, there are people that will bluff and there's a lot less fear uh, people are a lot more comfortable playing with money at two five than they are at one two definitely need to do more adjusting real time and the game is definitely more dynamic in my opinion uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, post them in the comments below and let me know if you like this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Uh, don't forget I have a whole bunch of other content. I have 1-2 vlogs, 2-5 vlogs. I even have a vlog where I played some 5-10 and I have an entire crash course, ground zero for somebody that's really struggling at 1-2 and 1-3. Uh, it's basically a starting point. It's my crash course on how to beat 1-2, no them and hold them. I have a playlist on it. Take a look at that. And I also offer coaching to players trying to beat 1, 2, and 1, 3. No limit hold them. One on one. Uh, it's been very effective with my students so far. Information in the video description below. Welcome to my vlog, Detroit. Take three. Oh. It's like. 
5 10 a.m. I haven't been to bed yet. And I'm drinking coffee. Gotta get this content produced. Anyways, 